In your statement, uh, you said the withdrawal of the red list was based on scientific and public health data. Would you concede that the travel ban was manifestly unscientific? Uh, no, I would not. Um, as we explained when we made the decision to uh, put South Africa and other countries uh, back on the red list, which was only, you know, with, this is less than three weeks ago, uh, but let me come back to that in a second. We said we were doing so in order to give us time to understand what we were facing in uh, after the identification of this new variant. Um, that new variant caused extreme concern to scientists all around the world, including here in South Africa, including in the UK. So we moved then in order to slow the spread. Now that we have concluded, uh, as you say in your opening remarks, that uh, the variant uh, Omicron is widespread within the UK and indeed in another of the countries, there is no purpose in maintaining that travel ban. So we have lifted it, and that is what we have done. And those, both of those decisions were based on science, and both of those were based on public health considerations. The reason I say it isn't so, because as soon as you announced uh, that red list, uh, as soon as you heightened travel restrictions, uh, many countries around the world announced cases, and yet they were not banned. So what happened at the time, and as I say, this has all played out in what has felt longer than two and a half weeks, but it's still just two and a half weeks. In the days after we made our decision, there were, as you say, a number of cases identified, including a few within the UK. They were all specific cases, uh, and they could all be traced to Southern African travel. Uh, that did not mean that the variant was into community transmission within those countries. That with respect, case, sir, that wasn't so. We've now lifted it. With respect, that wasn't so. A number of countries, in fact, European countries, had identified cases 11 days before our scientists came forward with that same information and a number of those cases were not linked to travel to southern Africa at all. The cases that we were looking at in the UK and the cases that we were looking at that emerged here in South Africa uh, there were very different sort of contexts. But I think the key thing is that you, know, we, we, you can't find where the first case was, that I think it is certainly a, a matter of fact that the first country that saw a spike in cases and came forward and identified them, for which, again, we have uh, commended them for doing so, was down here in Southern Africa. That was not the case in the UK at the time. Now that we, it is the case in the UK, now that it is the case in other countries, there is no purpose to the travel ban, as our minister said yesterday, and that is why they have lifted it as soon as they were able to do so, which is what we said at the time we would do. Sure, but in a globalized world, you would accept that these travel restrictions simply do not work. As soon as you identify a country where you think cases might be dominant, others will pop up and say they also have cases. And as you say, it's very difficult to identify where patient zero comes from. So there's no point to this. The travel bans, they certainly will not keep a virus or a variant of the virus out of any country uh, for good. We have always said that ourselves, but we are not the only country that has acted as we've gone through this pandemic to limit travel into our country in order to slow the spread of a variant uh, that we didn't know about. Uh, others did it as we've gone through the previous variants of concern. Others did it to the UK when we went through the alpha variant of concern. We know that it will not stop that virus entering our country. We do believe that it will slow the spread of that virus and give us time to understand it, to prepare, to take public health and safety measures, and in the case of the UK over the last 10 days, uh, to radically increase the distribution of vaccine boosters, uh, which again, all of the research and analysis, including from here in South Africa, uh, suggest is going to be crucial to dealing with this variant. Our government has called this nothing short of an apartheid ban, and we don't use that term lightly here. Are you saying we're, more, or we're going to see more of this kind of thing when future variants might emerge? Or can we consign what many scientists are calling a blunt instrument to the dustbin of history? So we completely understand uh, the hurt and the anger for those who were affected by the decision, although, as I've said, we believe we took it for good public policy, public health and science-based reasons. And we said we would reverse it as soon as we could, and that is what we have done yesterday. What? In terms of the way forward, I think we have to stay vigilant. I think we have to stay engaged. There has been a huge amount of work done between UK and South African scientists over the last two weeks uh, to study the risk that, we, uh, pose together, uh, that this variant poses to both of us together and indeed to the global community. We need to keep working together through groups like the WHO, the WTO and the UN to make sure that we understand how best to address this going forward together. We fully accept that damage has been done over the last two weeks. We said at the time we regretted that. We said we would reverse the ban as soon as we could, and that is what we have done. 
Please explain the comment that was made in the British Parliament by your Health Secretary, Sajid Javid, yesterday, saying to members of Parliament that the UK, in fact, was the country that alerted the world to the Omicron variant. I want you to have a listen uh, to what he said just yesterday. And there is no country in the world that is better at surveillance of those variants. Uh, may I remind the Honourable Gentleman that it was the UK that alerted the world to the threat of Omicron. How does that square up with what we know? Is that true or does that suggest that if indeed it is, the UK were the first to identify it and didn't tell the world until South African scientists did so? And why were we punished for it? Today, as I was watching the debate, uh, waiting for the announcement of the lifting of the travel ban, uh, we have made very clear that we commend South African scientists for their vigilance and indeed their expertise in identifying this variant and then their transparency uh, and raising it. Uh, and we have said that in our public statements. This foreign, uh, the health secretary said it after he spoke to the South African health secretary uh, two weeks ago. The prime minister has said it after he spoke to the prime minister uh, to the president, uh, and we said it in our public statement when we announced the travel ban last night. Was that clear? that we just played there a lie then? I don't think it was a lie, and uh, but we have made very, very clear that uh, we commend South Africa for their science and their vigilance. The problem is there's this double speak coming out of the British government. On the one hand, the Prime Minister thanks our scientists, as you are uh, echoing now, and we're promptly punished by, uh, uh, you know, for coming forward with that information. And yet, as I say, yesterday, your health secretary says, in fact, no, it was your scientists who discovered this. What are we to make of this double speak? So first of all, I don't think we believe that we punished South Africa because of the science. South Africa raised uh, the alert about the Omicron variant uh, and shared that data with the world, and we have commended that, and we will continue to do so. I accept that that then led to us imposing the travel ban, which had a consequence for South Africa. I also regret the stories that we've heard uh, of criticism of South African scientists uh, from here in terms of uh, raising the alarm, uh, and uh, I don't think that is right. We need to move forward on this on the basis of transparency and cooperation, uh, and that is what we must focus on doing as we work through this pandemic together, because it is not over for either of us. Anthony Philipson, a British High Commissioner to South Africa. Current events. Developing stories. Tough questions. Your voice making a difference. This is Breakfast with Bongani Bingwa.